welcome everybody. Uh, we are just waiting for all the participants to to join us in the in the webinar. So please be patient for uh, some seconds more that we wait that everybody are in, and then we can uh, we can start. Thank you. Okay, I think we can uh, we can start. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, this webinar dedicated to the sustainability of uh, one uh, of the uh, Italian tanning district, the Veneto, the Veneto leather uh, district. Um, today, I'm here uh, with Giacomo Zorzi. That is the uh, executive officer of uh, Unich branch office in, in Veneto, and the Professor uh, Eleonora Di Maria of the uh, Department of Economics and Management of the uh, University of uh, Padova, uh, Faculty of uh, Economics and, uh, and Management. Um, today's webinar, as I said, uh, is dedicated to deepen, to go deeper into some of the key aspects that compose the sustainability of uh, uh, the biggest Italian tanning district, the uh, Veneto tanning district, uh, a district that uh, um, uh, develops around the towns of Arzignano, Chiampo, Zermeghedo. Um, I'm just here to make a very brief introduction about uh, uh, the, the issue of, uh, of the webinar, then I will pass the microphone to uh, my colleague Giacomo Zorzi and then to Professor uh, Eleonora uh, Di Maria. Just uh, a um, technical uh, remark. Uh, this is a webinar, so uh, all the participants can intervene through the um, Q&A uh, session. So if you want to make some questions to the speakers, please use the Q&A or DER, if uh, uh, you use a, an Italian version of, of Zoom, uh, at the center, uh, at, the at the bottom of the screen, at the center, you can make question and we will, uh, we will answer to, to, to the question uh, or during the webinar or at the end, at the end of it. So uh, sustainability. So this webinar is part of a series of initiatives that UNICH uh, Italian Tanneries, UNICH is the association officially representing the Italian tanning industry. It's uh, a, a completely uh, private association financed by the Italian Tanneries, founded in 1946 and member of the Italian uh, Confindustria uh, with the mission of um, providing services to Italian Tanneries and promoting the Italian tanning industry at national and uh, international level. As I said, this webinar is part of a, a series of initiatives that our group, Unici in Appelle Group, uh, has organized in the last month, uh, focusing the attention on, uh, on sustainability. Sustainability is uh, a key issue for uh, Italian tanneries. As I always said, uh, sustainability is like oxygen for our companies because without uh, a strong commitment uh, on sustainability, probably we will not have such an important uh, tanning industry here, uh, here in Italy. All the efforts uh, of uh, the Italian tanneries uh, regarding sustainability are well uh, um, testified by, for example, the UNICH Sustainability Report, an annual report that our association elaborates in order to give information and data about the improvement of the uh, Italian tanning uh, industry on all the aspects that compose the sustainability of leather production. So from environmental aspects to chemical management, from uh, social responsibility issues uh, to traceability uh, concerns, uh, certification, all, all the aspects that, as I said, compose the sustainability when we talk about production of leather and the tanning, uh, the tanning process. Today's webinar is dedicated to uh, Arzignano's district. 
um, the, um, the data mining industry, as we will see in, uh, in the slides that we have prepared for the webinar, is organized in, in districts, in three uh, important tanning districts. Uh, we will see afterwards where they are uh, located. This is a peculiar characteristic of our industry. And uh, let me say that probably this element, this characteristic is one of the driver of the sustainability commitment and concern that our industry has developed uh, so far. Uh, the, uh, the fact that our companies are located in the district allows the, uh, the sector to develop some joint initiatives and projects in order to follow and uh, as I said, develop some uh, specific activities related to sustainability from uh, uh, wastewater treatment uh, to the treatment of solid wastes to the use of some solid wastes and some uh, secondary raw material uh, transform it into some other uh, raw material used by other, uh, by other sectors. So the district allows, as I said, the development of secondary activities that serve the sustainability of the tanning sector and are also efficient from an economic point of view. So when we analyzed the, 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 the framework of our tanning in district in Italy, we will see a um, uh, really a, uh, let's say a win-win strategy developed by companies, institutions and local and, uh, and local communities. So I don't want to spend uh, other words about it. And just before we will, we will uh, uh, present our slide, I would like to share with you a short video that we have prepared in order to give you some uh, pictures about uh, the, uh, the Veneto Leather District. So let me share the screen and we can show you the video. That's it. Uh, I hope that the, um, the, connection, uh, the connection allows you to see all the images and the sound with no big interruption. This is a problem that we always have when we have webinars. So anyway, I think that uh, you were able to appreciate the, the, the video. Uh, now I will share the presentation and uh, just make some brief comments about the first slide and then I will pass the microphone to uh, to Giacomo. Okay, here we are. So as, a, as I said, uh, um, the Italian tanning industry is uh, organized into tanning districts, uh, three main tanning districts in Italy. The first is in Veneto, as I said, in Arzignano, in the, in the Arzignano area, uh, and uh, the uh, Veneto district uh, 
um, waits for nearly 60% of the whole Italian leather production. Uh, Veneto is followed by the tanning district in uh, Tuscany uh, that is located uh, around the towns of Santa Croce sull'Arno uh, and Ponte, Ponte Adegola. The Tuscany district nearly um, produced 30% of the total national leather production. And the third uh, tanning district is located in Campania, mainly around the town of Solofra, 6% is the uh, weight of these districts. Then we have also a, a sort of district still in, in place, in, uh, still in, uh, in force in, in, in Lombardy, in the uh, Turbigo, Turbigo area, 4% is the percentage of, uh, of, of the weight of this, uh, of this district. And then we have a remaining 2% of the production that is made in, in the other region. We are talking about a, 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 a total industry, a, a, a national industry <coughs> that is, sorry, composed by nearly 1,200 companies employing uh, more or less uh, 18,000 uh, person with uh, uh, total production of around 120 million square meter of finished leather and 10,000 tons of sole leather. With the total turnover, uh, there is a nearly, uh, it's about 4.6, 4.7 billion euro per year with uh, um, a strong contribution coming from the export. The export uh, is about 3.3 billion euro per, per year and is directed to 119 countries. Really, these are the data of two, uh, 2019. We don't have available the uh, official data for 2020, but we are going to produce it quite, uh, quite soon. So this is the, I would say, the, the, the introductory picture of uh, uh, when we talk about uh, Italian district. So Giacomo, now it's up to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Luca. Thanks to everybody. Happy to talk to you. Uh, I am Giacomo Zorzi, as you said. I've been working here for the last 20 years in uh, this uh, district for UNH Group, and I have had the possibility to appreciate uh, in particular why this tanning district has been able to progress into a very efficient entity in terms of uh, quantity, also quality, and towards every aspect connected to sustainability. If we have a look, to his specific numbers, uh, Luca, next slide, please. Uh, those numbers you see are referred to, 20, to uh, 2019, uh, before a COVID pandemic. There are most than 450 tanneries, where a very large part of them are subcontractors. And with approximately 8,500 employees uh, and a turnover whose more than 77% comes from exportation, so a very large part of it. Uh, if we have a look on the turnover, on Italian sector turnover is almost 60%. On European one is almost 40%. And in the whole world, it covers more than 13% of global turnover in the tanning sector. So these are just numbers, but, but they are not enough to describe you completely what this district is. Next slide is a graphic representation of what a leather district is. It's a deep interrelationship inter between a so wide variety of stakeholders where tannery is in the center, but none of them can exist without the others. Uh, tanneries and many outsourcers exist because they very often have capability and specialization in their own particular phase of the process. Uh, so outsourcers have an important place in the district. Then chemical and machinery suppliers who proactively contribute in upgrading the district as a whole. A wastewater plant, one or two wastewater plants who centralize the treatment being much more efficient instead of having a lot of factory-footed plants. There are also testing labs 
who can concentrate and increase their competence on leather metrics. In this district, you can find every competence you need, and you have a wide, a very wide variety uh, for every single service. And competition, in particular, expresses its best results. Important training centers have been founded to train high quality technicians and managers and to offer interesting opportunities for employment to young people in the most important existing leather district, investing on young people. Uh, in this network, every tannery can be a supplier of semi-processed leather for many other tanneries in the same containing area. For example, for split leathers. This is a very good solution in valuing products that are not in your particular collection for a parallel specialized industry. Moreover, associations have an important role. There is the need to guarantee high quality services for those items they, that affect all as a guide. So, uh, regulatory authorities, again, and local governments are very important uh, and, uh, um, in this district because, as we can see, publication of results of their service campaigns, mainly about environmental performances, demonstrate that tanneries' efforts are rewarded because an inefficient environmental performance is mainly faced as a cost. In this slide, you do not find, as you see, the first line suppliers because, you know, tanneries buy from all over the world, the hides and skins and semi-processed leathers, but agents and traders are in the district to make possible to have the right quality for the right tannery. Again, standardization and certification body exist in the district because there is the real need to stay close to tanneries to design management standards and certification schemes in respect of uh, the district dynamics. The district only appears complicated. Please look at, go to the next slide. Uh, and its complexity is its real strength. A district like this is the perfect example where complexity generates efficiency because spreading of knowledge, because multiplication of relationship, uh, emulating of good practices, different approaches to similar criticalities and policy sharing really generates efficiency. And the last message I would like to leave to you is something that I already told in my quick intervention here, is, it, is that such complexity must be valued. Standards, Evaluation schemes and rules have to be designed to guarantee and save this district models. So, really, thanks for your attention. I'm here if you want, if you have any question. Thank you, Giacomo. So, okay, uh, Professor Di Maria, if you want to to share your presentation. Welcome, welcome to everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, have the opportunity to share with you the research that we have been uh, doing on this uh, extraordinary uh, district. So I'm going to share my screen. So please let me let me know if you are able to see my screen. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so uh, what I'd like to share with you uh, following the presentation that we've just heard is to, uh, let's say, explore, which is the role of sustainability and uh, what is, can be seen also as environmental upgrading in the concept of clusters or better industrial districts. Um, the, uh, Giacomo Dose has already stressed the, 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 the one of the 
many characteristics of the of the industrial district, which refers to the network and the attention on the local territories. Uh, my contribution today would be uh, to um, contextualize the uh, concept and the characteristic of industrial districts in the global value chain scenario, having in mind that uh, industrial district has uh, specialized nodes uh, of manufacturing and competencies within you know a very globalized uh, economic setting. So this is mainly uh, you know the, the introduction that I would like to share with you, and then I will move to explore specifically the Arzignano uh, case study uh, concerning uh, you know the sustainability perspective. Uh, I want to start um, with with the definition, but why I want to 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 bring to your attention the words that one of the father, let's say, of the industrial DC concept, an Italian one, said Giacomo Beccatini, um, because they it's it's in in the idea of industrial DC is something that really is. Uh, uh, represent some seeds of the notion of the sustainability that will become uh, relevant in, 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 in the decades after, you know, the, 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 the seminal idea of Beccatini about industrial district. Um, and I have to stress also that this is a concept that developed in Italy because Italy is one of the most important countries worldwide where this uh, way of organizing economic activities is, uh, is um, represented and represents also the strengths of the competitiveness of the country itself. So the idea of industrial DC is that we have to consider two different, let's say, uh, population, two different groups of, 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 of actors. One are the firms and uh, the picture that you have seen before about the different actor, different nodes is something that is being considered uh, particularly visible uh, in a specific area. But the other is the population of, of, of people, of the, the local community. They are both relevant because they are uh, strongly interconnected and the firm and the competitiveness of industrial district is rooted also on the contribution of the local communities in terms of uh, specialized workers, in terms of uh, local actors, and more, in, more specifically, the, this, the social um, fabric that sustain the, the activities of the firm, but that re represent also um, a perspective that from a, a stakeholder perspective is something which has to be recognized. And uh, this is also particularly relevant because it represents also a peculiar threat of the Italian production that I will explain also later. So we have to take into account this double dimension when we want to understand, to capture, which is one of the success of the industrial district model. Um, the second uh, thing I want to share with you is to say that we, we can um, have uh, an international, let's say, um, uh, comparison. Uh, I want to start give, giving you a, an idea about uh, a district, uh, discussing you, showing you, you know, the picture of the Silicon Valley. Why I move from Italy to the US? Uh, this is a very uh, explanatory picture, let's say, when you can see in a very, very short, uh, a little amount of, you know, a geographical area, a huge, a number of, uh, of companies. This is exactly one of the characteristics of the industrial DC that also, uh, you know, Giacomo Dozzi before was stressing the fact that there's a high density. And this density is something that is particularly relevant, uh, especially from an innovation point of view. So the, the let's say the story of the Silicon Valley, some sense has been described, uh, taking into account what occur in Italy. Uh, the other picture that I'm showing you refers to the Prato, district which is very famous uh, it's in the textile you know production is based in Tuscany but the idea here again is has been one of the you know the the, the, the most studied one uh, from you know from the Beccatini perspective is again the fact that you see a huge number of, of companies but this this is not only uh, a, a complexity uh, part. This is also richness. The fact that you have a huge amount of firms which are specialized. And so to summarize, let's say, the, the, the two main dimensions that represent uh, one of the strengths of the, of the district is, uh, I can mention two words that are tightly connected, manufacturing on the one hand and innovation on the other. But there are 
particularly um, peculiar in the way they are organized. Uh, the, the industrial this, it, it, sometimes we can identify very large companies, but in most of the cases, one of the uh, peculiar characteristics of the cluster is the fact that the manufacturing activities are localized. So we can put on a map, as we can find mentioned in Arzignano, for instance, the, the fact that there is a huge number of companies, small, medium-sized one, uh, that represent uh, um, the characteristics in terms of industrial specialization of an area, but it is specifically the network of these firms that represent its strengths, because you can have different actors within the value chain, but you can also have competitors within the same uh, step, let's say, of the activity. And this is something that um, nurture support uh, the competitiveness of the system and represent also an opportunity to share knowledge. And because it is a localized manufacturing system, there's a huge, let's say, competencies related with a specific product, specific production activities, specific, um, you know, uh, language also related with, uh, you know, with, with a product, with a, with, the, with a production activity that represent um, a specific place where also the, uh, the workforce is particular. So the human capital is something which is particularly relevant. As we have seen also from the video at the beginning, we can see machine, but we have also seen lots of workers with their own competencies working within the process. And the other, the, the other world, as I said, is localized innovation. Because of the aggregate agglomeration, because of the fact that there are many, you know, firms working in the same industry in the same industry, on the same product, in the, on the same processes, really support the development of new ideas, the fact that there's you know, uh, also copyleft kind of uh, processes. But what is important is that the story of industrial history is characterized by learning by doing process. On the one hand, we have you know, research development, development, so more, let's say, scientific driven kind of innovation. But what is also important is that uh, by doing product, by making, uh, you know, leather, there is an innovation that is um, is being taking place because of the experience, and so the, also the history of the of the this is something that become really a strength. The kind of what the you know the economic idea was there called spillover effect, the fact that knowledge flows. And this is something that really represents a factor of attractiveness also for multinational and brands that really can identify uh, key actors, key partners, key suppliers uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in providing also excellence, for instance, in their, uh, in their uh, you, you know, in the way they're produced. And as also what has been mentioned before, one of the key characteristics that also represent, for instance, trends also for Italy is that is it, within industrial district, there is a strong competence in production, but also this push also technological innovation and the fact that more and more, um, you know, uh, machines also, for instance, for saving water uh, could be developed or to produce something that save energy or reduce, you know, for instance, the environmental impact is something that is being a uh, concern. Uh, I want to stress also that is not only about the district itself. One of the key um, elements that represent a challenge, but also an opportunity is the connection of the industrial district to a uh, global value chain. So uh, we can have to consider two factors. On the one hand, um, the industrial district, there are more and more companies that want to invest in, in the industrial DC because they want to grasp the knowledge that has been developed. Uh, but also uh, there is also process of internationalization of companies that become, uh, you know, that as it's been homegrown multinational. So they're really able to manage international markets and they're able to 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 spread you know the product or to to connect to brands and uh, and uh, and and retailers worldwide. And this is something that really represent a, 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 a value because it stressed the fact that the, the, you know, the value which is produced in terms of you know, manufacturing activities, new product is something that is a value worldwide. But also 
the class are, the, the becomes really, um, let's say, places that are, are really relevant for key value chain. And we have seen, for instance, in the figures at the beginning that the, the Arzeniano cluster is really relevant if we have to consider, you know, the ladder, but also, you know, the, 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 the global, uh, you know, uh, landscape in terms of leather production. So uh, let's say a small, let's say 13 municipalities that are really able to have a, a weight worldwide. So we have to look at the industrial DC always taking into account the connections also with the, the global dimension. A, a peculiar input also is the fact that there's a high level of specialization in district with different characteristics. So there are some, you know, uh, highly specialized suppliers that, for instance, are um, really um, um, expert, are really um, competent in uh, small steps in the value chain. There are other companies that uh, are able also to develop their own brand or their work on the design of the products in the idea that all these kind of activities are connected and start from manufacturing, from production. The, 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 the strength in the long run of, of industrial district is, is linked to the fact that within cluster, there are what are called local dynamic actors. You need to have this dynamic actor that constantly innovate uh, in order to have a vital, let's say, and successful industrial district. Uh, and and also is a, in, enabling uh, you know the local manufacturing system to be very um, valuable also for for instance brand and 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 lead firms that work worldwide. I want to show you a picture now that I, I will spend a couple of words here uh, to 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 say what is happening in terms of um, you know value which is produced um, in in the in the debate in the in the the framework concerning global value chain, usually we, uh, it's used this, this kind of um, smile idea. You can see this, you know, this curve that represent the different activities, which is at the center, there is the manufacturing. Uh, on, the, on the left, there is the R&D and design, and on the right, uh, you know, branding, marketing, and distribution. Um, uh, in the in the in the framework in the in the picture here, uh, the, there is you know the different steps of the value chain. But if you can see on the left, there is different values in terms of value added. Um, usually, from you know from a global value chain perspective, manufacturing, uh, if we consider traditionally what you know many lead firm multinational worldwide uh, you know uh, approach in, in many different industries you know manufacturing consider and i mean it's something that's you know there is a rational behind that r d design branding and manufacturing is very high uh, value added activities um what is occurring I'm not mentioning now uh, in, in Arzinano, but more in general, what is occurring at the district level? There are some districts that really think that, the, uh, and the companies within industrial district that really want to invest in branding and design, but there are many other districts and uh, you know, Arzignano is one of them that move up. What does it mean? It means in terms that investing in becoming more and more specialized in the manufacturing because it's there, there is a value, but this value is linked to a, a constant process of innovation that provide better product, better services, better processes and um, sustainability is part of this upgrading process. Uh, and uh, from this point of view, these kind of districts are really interesting also for global players. So I'm moving to the, the idea of sustainability, what it can be considered also environmental upgrading. So if you have this picture in mind what is uh, occurring at the, uh, the, the district leg. Like that. That's the, the and if there is a, a, a increased attention on sustainability and what is called environmental upgrading. So try to capture more and more value investing in environmental processes and, and, and on the environmental perspective um, from different point of view, reduction of ecological footprint, reducing gas emission, working on biodiversity and so on. But the key processes uh, related with environmental are 
you know, uh, mainly three, three directions. So one attention in terms of sustainability is, you know, the process improvement. So working uh, a lot on eco-efficiency. The other attention in terms of sustainability is more related with product improvement, to have a better product with a product which is more environmentally friendly, to work on, uh, you know, working on recycling or recycle kind of product. This is also linked to, you know, the broad view, for instance, of a circular economy. And then there is another issue because process improvement is strongly related to production, but more in general, sustainability can also have a, a broader picture, let's say, taking into account also the, what is called the organizational improvement. So having in mind also, you know, certification related, for instance, with the social uh, and environmental impact of the activities of the firm and so on and so forth. Um, this, this idea of environmental sustainability stress two things. One is that environmental upgrades, so investing in sustainability has to be considered innovation process. It's not something that occurs after innovation. It has built innovation process. So this is something which is becoming really, really relevant, and this is strongly coupled to manufacturing. So if firms are mastering manufacturing, they are mastering innovation. And so also sustainability is strongly linked to that. So if we accept this view, uh, we have to consider sustainability that have two drivers or two main actors. One is, you know, the role of brands and lead firm or in general that can really be able to, to provide, to support, to push, you know, firms to, to invest in sustainability. But on the other hand, there is also an active role of suppliers that because of their knowledge about product and process can be really active um, actors in this uh, sustainability path. And, and, uh, and if those suppliers are located in clusters, this mix become particularly interesting, uh, you know, to consider. Um, so this is the picture about, uh, you know, about, um, you know, the, the, the discussion on, on cluster. But if we move to Italy, as I said, the history and the characteristics of Italy is uh, built on class. This is a famous picture that is being provided by what is called the, the, the Industrial District Lab many years ago. So the, the color area I'm mentioning and, and the Veneto is particularly rich in terms of clusters, um, uh, stress the fact that Italy is, but is becoming particularly relevant uh, worldwide uh, because the, 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 the economic activities are characterized by the Industrial District model. And also because it's slightly linked, not in general to uh, different industries, I don't know, the Silicon Valley that I mentioned, but on low, also called low media tech industry. It doesn't mean that there is no innovation, but the kind of innovation I will come in in a minute is, is something which is different. It's not only related with R&D and technology, but is also linked to other, to other um, peculiarities. And uh, the Made in Italy, the story of Made in Italy is a story of district and also Italy is uh, recognized worldwide as uh, suggesting uh, compared to, you know, only large organizations, large firms, uh, a peculiar way of organizing economic activities where you may, you may be a small or medium sized firm, but because you are located in, in a district, then you become strong because there are other uh, firms close to you and because of the innovation knowledge sharing that we have just you know explored um the the made in italy these are just pictures very different products that comes that are related with different clusters uh the the idea of the made in italy is that and the strength of the made in Italy and of clusters themselves is that the is not only um a, 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 you know an issue of, of working with the technical product, mastering the process, but there is also a culture behind products that really help again the value that that increase the value uh, of, of what is being proposed. These are you know finished product, but also as we also seen from from the video at the beginning there is also a, a, a radical and strong link between the manufacturing the territory where those products are comes from and 
uh, you know, and the value which is attached. Ag again, which is not only about, you know, having um, perfect, uh, you know, product that are really functional, but also that in some sense tells a story of the territory where, it, uh, where the product is produced. This is something that really, um, you know, is uh, behind, uh, one of the reasons behind, you know, the, 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 the success also of the industrial district. Uh, what about Arzignano? Uh, and so this is a picture of the describing, uh, you know, the, the leather global value chain where Arzignano is, you know, at the center here in terms of leather production. You can see here the different, you know, kind of activities. I don't want to spend too much on that, but to say that, you know, the leather production is a, a interconnected uh, upstream and downstream and the ladder you know goes into different in many different you know markets and we have seen that um, you know the there is also opportunity to, to, to give value to the ladder into different uh, final product application but there's also important to stress you know some supporting industry that uh, characterize the district um, in, in the case of Ardignano we have seen that you know the different activities are represented in, you know, uh, uh, tanneries that, you know, cover the full cycle, but as was mentioned in also at the beginning, there are also specialized suppliers that work in different steps. So I don't want to go into detail, but just to say that, you know, the richness of the cluster uh, model can be seen also in the case of Ardignano. Uh, some years, um, um, the, the, we, 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 we carried out a research and I wanted to show you some result uh, that has been just uh, finished as a, you know, the part of economics and management or Arzignano to understand and to explore better what was the, the, the sustainability path. And so I'm going to share with you some uh, results of the report that we have presented and uh, we, we, we work in collaboration with Acqua del Campo um, on, on, this, on this research. So we use the unit <laughs> uh, data. So uh, we, we explore on a 10-year basis, you know, what occur at the Zerzinano uh, district level. And we can see that, you know, the number of firms has, has changed a little bit, but not so dramatically. But also, it's very interesting to see that in 10 years, also the number of employees has been almost stable. This means that, you know, the, there's a strength in, in, this, in this district. And I must say that from a sustainability point of view, this is something that we have to, to stress is that on a, on a 10 year basis, you know, also the value of production has been increased. Of course, this is just on, on a, you know, on a market value we adopt, you know, um, uh, we, we cannot consider, you know, the currency adaptation, but what this means is that it's really relevant, both in terms of uh, value, but also in terms of export. And this is something that additionally stressed the role of the Arzinano on a, uh, you know, on a global perspective. And uh, the, 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 the Arzinano uh, um, district uh, is also important as we have seen, uh, being the first, uh, you know, industrial district, the first, uh, you know, node in, in, the, in the production of leather at the Italian level. Having, uh, considering uh, the, the production of, of leather uh, to, to, to reply to, in some sense to, to provide, um, you know, leather that could be used then, uh, you know, in automotive furniture and, you know, the fashion, but mainly shoes, of course, and accessorize um, applications uh, uh, downstreams. Um, what about the, 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 the sustainability activities? So I'm going to show you some, some results of the analysis that we have done. So one a picture that I want to share with you is this one. Um, so we, we uh, based on, on, on the data that we get also uh, with, the, with Acu del Tiempo, we were able to, to evaluate uh, some of the key, let's say, um, uh, critical, uh, you know, uh, um, um, uh, materials and and component that results from the you know on uh, on water or during the process on uh, on the leather production and uh, over ten years uh, as you can see you know the the blue area uh, it represents you know the water the water use and what we can stress is that it's almost stable 
So what this means, this is one of the first very interesting result is that despite the fact that or uh, it, 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 yes, despite the fact that the production has been grow, there's been a, a, an enormous effort at the Arzignano uh, leather um, district to uh, to to save and to be efficient from you know from a water perspective. Uh, the other the other element is related to to the fact that, for instance, uh, chrome has been uh, decreasing a lot. This is this is uh, we can see also later is also um, pushed by you know some market that really and also also regulation that you really require tanneries to become really um in the on the upfront of the uh of the uh of the sustainability of the technological innovation in order to change the production to to chroma free uh you know uh, leather uh, um, and on the other on the other Frisa in terms of I don't know chloride or sulfate uh, we we can see almost a, a kind of um, stable trends which means that on average taking into account that the value of production and the production itself has grow because of there is increasing demand worldwide it means there has been a, a, an enormous res result in terms of sustainability achieved the other issue that I want to stress here are you know the the names and the project. Um, these are the projects that collectively have been developed and, fi and financial, for instance, from the European Union with the, you know, the life project, for instance. These are projects that are not really related only to one company, but that put together um, actors that are in, in the district and refer to different companies, but also involve, uh, as we have heard before, uh, you know, uh, companies that were on secondary raw material, or they are able to transform, you know, waste into into um, new products. And so there is uh, two two facts here that I want to stress. One is the collaborative dimension that could be uh, possible because of the district. The other is the idea of connection among different actors and the research that is behind the sustainability uh, path. Um, we carried out uh, also a survey. And these are some uh, some data that I want to to, to share with you about some uh, strategies and and result of the sustainability strategies that have been um, uh, implemented at the Arzignano district. Uh, what is the, about the idea of sustainability in general? What we can see here, you know, about the first result is that you know tanneries in general approach sustainability having in mind the attention on you know prevailed waste generation, there is a strong attention on, on eco-efficiency, on the idea of being very aware about the control of resources. And this is also linked to the constraints that in terms of use of water, in terms of you know the 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 the, the, the water treatment at the end of the process has to be has to be considered. And uh, and also the attention on efficiency in terms of optimization of all the natural resources. Um, there is uh, um, um, you know only a, a, a few amount of them that really do not consider, for instance, sustain, circular economy activity. But more in general, uh, you know, for the companies, of course, that we have interviewed, there is an attention on 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 using on reducing waste or making those waste available for other company and this is exactly what I've, uh, we have seen for instance before in terms of projects so try to re transform every single wa waste uh, possible into a new opportunity and uh, having in mind that also you know leather is a byproduct have to be in some sense that that increase the value because of the you know the the the, the activities of the tannery is something that characterize I, I must say the you know the the the, the, the company itself uh, what about sustainability on a supply chain uh, management perspective we have to consider that you know tanneries here are you know at the heart of a value chain which is larger so uh, we are not exploring now you know the the downstream so the the relationship with their market but you know the the, the relationship with the other suppliers having in mind that uh, in in the picture that i show you not all tenders control or cover or specialize in the whole you know uh, a production of of of, of leather uh, activities and so one of the issue here is that 
mostly more than you know 50% about 60% of companies really consider you know uh, the fact that they receive adequate information on the origin of raw materials so there's attention on this traceability uh, part there is um, this is you know the the, the most evident you know, feedback that we receive on this topic, but also that there is an attention of the fact that uh, you know, sustainability reduce risk, or there is an attention of guidelines and procedures to verify also the sustainability of suppliers. Um, what are instead the drivers? How, uh, why better uh, tanneries are investing in sustainability? Um, these are, Traditionally, you know, the, the literature, the study says that we have external and internal factors. And that there is an, a strong driver that comes, of course, from the market. So for the demand uh, of toxic free leather, uh, the, for instance, from the fashion brand, there is an attention of reducing chrome, as we have seen uh, for the automotive sectors. But there is also an, an attention on, uh, on, on the fact that also at the local level, there are institutions that really support the attention on this environmental sustainability as part of the upgrading process that we have seen. Uh, from an internal point of view, it's really important to consider that, supply, that the tanneries really think about the relevance of including sustainability, not only because it's a value, because we have seen later that is, is, is a value, but also because it could strengthen the, the competitiveness also of the firm. In fact, uh, uh, asking to, to tunnel is why they are drive they are investing in sustainability. And this is something which is much in line with other research that we have done also outside Arzignano. Uh, the companies that are investing in sustainability really think that there is a value related with the reputation and value of the companies. Also, there's attention on the culture uh, dimension also, but also the other driver is related with the customer final customers or you know the the, the brands and the, the customer operating different um you know industries different application and uh, in different countries but there is also tension on the stakeholders what you can see there is no one you know driver which is more dominant than the other so the variability is very slow meaning that this is something that is, is becoming you know, relevant. I'm, I'm going uh, to the end. So what about certification? This is something that is becoming really relevant also talking sustainability in general, also in Arzignano. This is a picture that describing you know, all the different uh, cert uh, certification in terms of product process and the sustainability, having in mind the economic, environmental, social sustainability. This is a very rich picture. Uh, uh, marking in orange are the ones that are most, let's say, adopted in, in the Arzignano, taking into account what you have served so far. but. It's really interesting to say that the, 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 the firm really invests in sustainability in, in certification as a way to demonstrate the process that they've done, but also to, to um, inform you know, the market about the, the, you know, the value of the, the, the innovation that they have been um, developed within uh, internally, also within the, the supply chain. Just to go to the conclusion, there are also some barriers uh, because sustainability, we have to consider that is an ongoing process, is a ne never ending process. Uh, there's always a process of uh, improvement. So in terms of cost, uh, in terms of, sorry, barriers, I must say that, you know, there are four dots here. The the most important one is related with supply chain. So having the opportunity to really uh, provide traceability and having a, a very uh, um, um, a more, uh, you know, transparent and coordinate uh, supply chain, which is able also to provide also to the market information and reduce also risk from uh, from the idea of controlling supply chain and having uh, the different steps of the supply chain uh, very clear and measure and and capture um, in terms of cost uh, this is this is a barrier but not only in terms of investment per se more in the idea that the cost have be, and to be rewarded but also the fact that um, there is the idea that there is an, an economic implication of course of sustainability which is connected with 
market. There are a lot of tension here. So on the one hand, you know, market is in general is asking for for more and more sustainability and sustainable, let's say, green products. But at the same time, this um, the, the you know the size of this market is very variable and not necessarily all market also all final customers are really um, you know available to pay for this or, or, or have to understand better what does it mean a uh, green product and the, the I, which is the firm culture, meaning that there should be also a, a better in terms of organizational transformation. So there are some companies, of course, that are more advanced than others, but the fact that they are within the district represent also an opportunity. So to conclude, um, the what, what are the insights talking about sustainability and upgrading, environmental upgrading, uh, considering the Diazignano leather district. There is a, an apparatus role of suppliers, in that case, uh, supplied meaning uh, the tanneries, um, to strengthen the competitiveness. So if we have to consider on a, a global value chain, the fact there are specialized suppliers, specialized producers here, tanneries, really represent an, a, a strength if we are consider you know the, the worldwide perspective and the, the 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 expert and the competencies in mastering the product and process it really is an opportunity to improve also sustainability you need to have technical and knowledge you need to understand and know to know what are the processes in order to improve them to uh, to transform that also from a sustainability point of view and the cooperation as we have seen from the project is something which is particularly relevant, working together in order to reduce risk, to provide knowledge that can be spread internationally. And final, um, environmental and economic uh, upgrading or more in general sustainability are tightly together. By being more sustainable, you are also more competitive. You 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 grow, and you are. Um, uh, it, they have not to be considered as a tension. Uh, but they have to be approached um, uh, on uh, tightly, let's say, coupled together, because otherwise, you you know, the firm may miss some opportunities. So thank you for your attention. I've stopped here and I'm open to reply to any question you may have. Thank you, Professor Di Maria. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, let me see, there, there is no question. There are no questions uh, right now, so I invite everybody uh, to make question. Uh, otherwise, maybe we can make one. So maybe I I, I make a question, um, Professor uh, Professor Di Maria. Um, in your in your opinion, what is the biggest challenge? For uh, well, well, now you have had the the the, the, um, the possibility to um, to investigate about uh, the Arzignano district, uh, all the characteristics, all the the, the dynamics around uh, around the uh, tanning industrial life of uh, of Arzignano. Uh, in the in your opinion, what is the biggest challenge for uh, the future development of uh, uh, of Arzignano district? Uh, you mean in general, not necessarily linked to sustainability? No, 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 no. So, sorry, links uh, links to, to 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 sustainability because we have seen Arzignano is absolutely at the forefront uh, when you talk about sustainability of leather and sustainability of the tanning process. But sustainability always means also a continuous improvement. So a continuous investment, a, a, a need for a vision to see what will be next and uh, try to anticipate probably the next, the next big things in order to be, uh, how can I say, just more competitive than the others, priorly than, than, uh, than the others. So in your opinion, what could be the, 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 the biggest challenge for the next future? Um, um, if I have to mention, there are, uh, uh, let's say three, but with different, you know, degree, let's say, of, of priority. Um, one is related to the fact that on, 
you know, sustainability and also circular economy monogen really requires the, all, the entire value chain to be more transparent and connected. So traceability, you know, from one point, one, the, from the beginning to the end is something that has really become relevant. Um, and is also something which is linked to the second um, element that also we explore in the research that I have not uh, the chance to, to present, which is linked to uh, digitalization and technologies, digital technologies, um, because um, we um, also from past research, and this is also is in the agenda, also the European level, uh, when we talk about you know the new green deal and uh, and um, you know all these um, you know technologies, industry for porno, advanced manufacturing technologies. These kind of technologies um, are really able to um, map to control the use of resources to have an, an, um, a much more control in terms of data available. Uh, about the you know the what what is going on at the manufacturing level, but also towards customers and suppliers. And um, for instance, one of the issues that has been has been debated now at the European level is what is called you know the digital product passport. So more and more, um, if especially we think for instance for the for the lead for the fashion industry uh, but it could be applied you know in any kind of application uh, the idea that the product brings with you I don't know with smart label uh, all the information concerning you know the story the the resources the the origin is is something which is one of the frontier now but being having the date having the information about you know uh, how much water has been used or has been saved, for instance, and uh, it, and, it, and the idea of to communicate in a very um, effective way, this becoming something that uh, could be a challenging activity, but also is becoming a, a it should become a priority. And uh, since we know that the Azzignano is one of the most important actors worldwide. What is happening in Azignano is able to, to, you know, to shape the future or to, to identify the direction. So this is, this is, uh, let's say, an important uh, issue. So the, all, all the project, all the activities and innovation that occur at Azignano can represent a trajectory. And um, I mean, I, I, I think this could be the two main challenges. Thank you. Oh, some questions. We have some questions. The first question is, uh, well, if it is possible to receive a copy of the presentation. Well, no problem for what concerns our presentation. Uh, I have to ask you, Mrs. Uh, Professor Di Maria, if uh, your presentation could be shared or if you have to absolutely. wait for the... No, ah, okay. no, absolutely. That's, that's great. And uh, this is an anticipation of the wall, yes. uh, of, uh, of the wall study. Even the wall study will be available publicly? Uh, we, have to, we have to finalize some of the content yet, but then uh, of course uh, I, I will inform you when it will be available. Perfect, because uh, let me say it is uh, very, very interesting. We have uh, uh, followed and supported many, many studies in the last decades about the tanning industry because, well, I was, as I was mentioning also before, the Italian tanning industry model is uh, an excellence uh, when we talk about leather production, uh, globally speaking. So uh, we have seen a lot of studies regarding uh, uh, the district model, but uh, well, let me say this study is particularly interesting and Thank you. absolutely really, um, I'm gonna say, uh, just give us some very useful information and data, you know, also to see how we can develop or how, how we can support as institution, the development of uh, uh, sustainable strategies in, uh, inside, uh, inside the district. Second question, and I, well, I make this question to, 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 to both of you, to, uh, to Giacomo and uh, um, Professor Di Maria. Uh, what is the weight in to? I, I think to is tone, so you can see also in the DNR um, Square, uh, box. What is the weight in terms that represents the usage of byproducts for other industries as cosmetic, pharma, or others? I don't know if, if we have the, I'm going to say, the segmentation of the sales of our uh, 
secondary raw material to this, uh, if this is the question, I, I'm asking uh, Francisco Valente if this is the question, if you want to know how much of the recovery of waste is the, uh, that are transformed into secondary raw material are destined to the cosmetic industry, pharma industry or other industry? I suppose we don't have the right number, the exact uh, uh, number is that, but what, um, what can I say now, I have to verify uh, my data is, is that the, the two main companies which are mentioned that are CICID and ILSA uh, are able to transform something like, if I remember well, 100,000 tons per year of byproducts. Uh, I'm not sure at the moment of this number. I have to verify it. I will sure it will give you. Okay. This, uh, the, uh, meanwhile, we had the confirmation from Mr. Valente that this was this was the question. And let me say, uh, if Mr. Francisco Valente is Mexican, just I can anticipate that we will participate in a webinar about uh, sustainability and circular economy organized by UNIDO uh, for the Mexican tanneries in April, but we will give all the information afterwards. This is part, as I said, of all the activities related to the promotion and communication of uh, Italian leather sustainability, uh, globally, globally speaking. Uh, another question. Do you think, uh, probably this is a question, probably more for uh, Giacomo that is also an expert when we talk about certification in the leather industry. Uh, do you think that the district industry model could help uh, unify, reduce, and or rationalize all the various sustainability certification that exist today? Oh, One million very dollar hard. question. <laughs> this is very, very difficult, but I uh, turn back to one concept I explained it in my uh, brief explanation before. Uh, the certification schemes uh, and the certification requests are mainly driven by the clients. And so clients has to uh, have clear, we are the uh, most uh, um, important uh, uh, certification scheme they could follow or they could trust in. Um, for our side, the association and the certification body, we try to offer a management system and certification schemes, uh, which has to be very useful for the, for the for tannery uh, mainly, to be uh, easily uh, uh, to, to, to make them uh, easily to applique in, uh, uh, in the tannery and to help the tannery to better communicate their uh, sustainability upwards. This is what we can do to offer to the market uh, schemes that has to be useful. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Giacomo. Um, last question I see. Um, it is in Italian. I will translate it into English. <laughs> this is quite delicate. Anyway, I, I just read and then we will see how to answer. Sustainability is also an important investment and as a supplier of chemical products, we don't find today the sensitiveness from uh, some of our clients, tanneries, to accept a, an adequate price, sale prices for the products that needs to be, I'm going to say, uh, uh, to be made uh, on this concern. So I think with a, a, a higher sustainability uh, degree, and they refuse our project because they are too expensive. Uh, in your opinion, this trend will change in the next year? Well, I can make some comments about this. And uh, well, I don't want to go into a very delicate debate about the prices of raw material. Right now, 
right now more than ever because we are now in a very delicate market moment because of the pandemic and uh, many of our tanneries are complaining about the increases they are facing when they are buying raw materials, both raw ice and skins and chemical products. I don't want to go into detail about it because, you know, when we talk about trade matters, you know, everybody has their own reason and everybody is right. So I don't want to go into these details. But anyway, I think it's very important to make some point about this, uh, this comment that is about the fact that sustainability has a cost. What uh, um, Mr. Cisco is, uh, is saying about chemical products, it is something that I think can say also about the price of their finished leather towards the clients. We have also insisted a lot uh, about this uh, uh, with, the, with the clients, with the, with the supply chain stakeholders, because for sure, all the sustainability project, all the sustainability requests, all the sustainability projects that uh, a tannery or a particular value chain, uh, supply chain is developing needs investment, needs, needs, uh, needs resources, human resources, financial resources. And sometimes, sometimes for sure, uh, even tanneries, they complain about the fact that all these efforts are not really priced by the clients in terms of orders and in terms of, of prices. This is, uh, I think, from what I read, this is a concern that touches all the, the, the or many of the, of the stakeholders of the, of the supply chain. For sure, this is an issue. For sure, this is an issue. And I think that it is very important to talk about this issue because uh, we are, uh, well, we, we, we have to say that probably they, well, as we have said, I think quite, uh, you know, extensively. Uh, the Italian tanning industry is one of the most developed tanning industry globally, globally speaking. And um, they serve a particular kind of market that is particularly um, interested and sensitive to all the sustainability issues. But we have to say that not all the market have has the same sensitiveness when we talk about sustainability. It is a matter of price ranges. And for sure, we, we can easily imagine that probably the low to medium ranges of the market is a little bit less sensible to this kind of, uh, uh, of issues. But sustainability, I think, has no boundaries and uh, shouldn't have no boundaries. So I think that uh, all the markets should, uh, should make an effort on, on this concern. We cannot live in a market with, I'm going to say, a class A market, sustainable, uh, with the added value, so uh, value B with the concern about sustainability, and the class B market. Because we all live in the same planet, and this should be an effort made by everybody. For sure, it is not easy. Uh, for sure, some, uh, some companies, some industry, some national industry has a, a more competitive advantage on this because maybe they can develop a, 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 a more sustainable technology or they can invest in more sustainable solution. This is, uh, well, I think this is, this is the, uh, the reality. But uh, I, I think that we, have, we all have to work on, uh, on, this, uh, on this direction. I don't know, Giacomo or Professor Di Maria, if you want to add something on this concern about the I, I want to just, um, you know, make a comment, but taking in mind other research that we have done on other, not necessarily tanneries, but other companies that have really invest in um, in circular economy activities or in sustainability. Um, what uh, what I want to stress is. Uh, the, the strong relation between costs and value. So the sustainability is, is an innovation process that, of course, uh, requires cost, but also increase the value more in general about, you know, the, the final product, whatever it is. And, uh, and what we observe and what the, the companies told us when we ask about, you know, the barriers, the pros and cons is that, you know, the, 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 the price of their product is something that is, is critical because you know the customers are really uh, interested in sustainability, but up to now 
on general basis that they're not necessarily always aware or pay for. This is because we are in a transition phase, as you, you were saying, when we always we have no planet B, so we have to go in that direction anyhow. But what is emerging from that study is that really they invest in R&D in activities is production. This is something that we have taken for granted, but really invest in marketing, but not in marketing in general, because you need communication. You need to explain which is the, what is the value behind, uh, a, a, say, a green product, a, a, a sustainability activity that justify higher value which is connected with higher prices. So I want just to say that this is something that has to be considered, not only practicing sustainability, but also communicating is one of the key challenge if I have to connect with your previous questions. Thank you. Uh, well, Ms. Mr. Cisco would like to puntualize that he is speaking about cost of research and development and not about raw materials in general. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I hope I was clear about that. I was just joking about uh, the current market debate about raw material prices. But Mr. Cisco, you are absolutely right. I hope uh, my answer, uh, my further answer was uh, quite uh, uh, complete on this side. Uh, when we talk about uh, an excellence and we, and we are talking about a, a, an industry that, as I said, uh, is located in the upper part of the market. So research and development is absolutely, and research and development on sustainability more than, uh, more than the rest is absolutely a key issue for the whole Italian leather supply chain. Research and development means investment. And uh, uh, for sure, if we want to maintain uh, as a uh, uh, tanning industry, our global leadership, we need to continue to, to invest. So absolutely, uh, your, your point is, is right. We all have to make our own efforts in order to uh, make things more fluid along the supply chain, even when we talk about research and, 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 and development. As I said, research and development must be priced uh, from all the sides that it comes from. So when tanneries talks with their clients, when the suppliers talk with the tanneries, and, Everybody, everybody should be aware that um, sustainability and R&D needs money to be invested in. Uh, there is also another uh, question by Mr. Uh, by Mr. Valente. As for sure, Unich is working integrated in Cotans today regarding LCA, life cycle assessment, the determination of the leather footprint is impacted by the valorization of the byproducts. Yes, you are right. Are you working in the redefinition of this calculation? Yes, uh, when we talk about LCA, when we talk about environmental footprint, carbon footprint, this is a very, uh, very, very important issue. It is also a very complicated issue from a technical point, technical point of view. Your point is right. The valorization of the byproducts of our process must be taken into, into consideration in order to calculate the right, the right footprint. And let me say that we have also to valorize, at first, we have to valorize the fact that the right skin that we use as a raw material, they are a byproduct of the meat industry. And so the burden that we have from the farming activities should be based on the fact that we are recovering a byproduct, a byproduct that we valorize as a byproduct, but without the tanning industry, this byproduct will be a waste, a waste with all the economic and environmental cost that a waste um, envisaged. So, uh, let's go on. We have also uh, no. There is somebody with audio uh, audio problem, but we cannot help you. I'm sorry about this, uh, Mr. Cisco. Thanks us, and uh, yes, some congratulation for. And yes, you can, Mr. Sini, you can have a copy of the of the presentation afterwards. So, if there are no other question, it's twenty past six. So I think we are quite in line with the, 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 line, the, the timeline uh, we talk about this webinar. I invite everybody, if there are some more questions, to make it right now. Otherwise, we can say goodbye to everybody and see you to the next uh, occasion and the next event.
organized by us. Okay. Just congratulations. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Di Maria. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you, everybody. And see you next time. Bye.